Welcome to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through connecting the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini to the computer, registering it with M-Audio, downloading the included software and virtual instruments, and then talk you through how to get it connected with a DAW. In my case, I'm gonna use Pro Tools because Pro Tools is my main DAW. So I'm gonna show you how to get it connected there. There are some articles that M-Audio has out on connecting this with other DAWs. So go check those out if you're interested and you use a different DAW than Pro Tools. But in this video, I'll walk you through and that might get you 90% of the way there. And then you can figure the other 10% out yourself because when it comes to the setup in the DAWs, they're all very similar. Each DAW has its own nuance, but for the most part, the general setup is the same. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos on this controller. I'm gonna be doing a detailed review where I go into not only detail on the look and feel, but also go into all the functionality that's included with this controller. Talk to you in depth about all the features and everything regarding the Oxygen Pro Mini. So if you're looking to buy this or you already bought it and you're trying to figure out how to use it, hopefully that video will give you a lot of direction. And if you're looking to buy this controller or another controller and you want to help support this channel, I'm going to include a link in the description below. It helps me out at no extra cost to you and it helps me to be able to buy even more cool gear for you. So with that, let's jump into the video and talk about connecting the Oxygen Pro Mini to the computer. And we really have one option. It comes with an included USB cord. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug the squarish end of the USB cable and I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me on the actual terminology. I think it's USB B or C or A. You know, it's one of those three. And then we're gonna take the other end, the normal USB end, and we're gonna plug that into the computer. You see the controller lights up and we get kind of just that opening sequence, the blinky lights, and the controller itself is on. Now, unlike the 25, 49, and 61 key versions of the Oxygen Pro, there is no on off switch on this controller. So the way that you turn it on is to plug it into the computer, to turn it off, you just unplug it. I wish there was an on off switch, but really for the price point, I can't complain too much. So once we've got it plugged into our computer, Windows is gonna recognize that and it uses just the universal USB driver that comes with Windows or Mac, and so you don't need to download any additional drivers in order to use the MIDI functionality. Now, what we're gonna wanna do next is register the controller with M-Audio, and to do that, we're gonna go over to the computer, we're gonna go to our browser, and we're gonna go to M-Audio's website. You can either type M-Audio into your search engine, or you can go up to the top address bar and type m-audio.com. Once this is loaded up, go over to the account. And if you don't have an account with M-Audio yet, go ahead and create one. Otherwise, you can sign in if you've got other controllers or things from M-Audio, you've already got an account, go ahead and sign in. And once you've signed into your account, you're gonna go to the register product link. When we click register product, we have a few fields that we need to fill in here. First of all, the product we're gonna select is the Oxygen Pro Mini. And then you're gonna enter the serial number. And now the serial number is found on the bottom of the controller. It's on a little label there and it's marked serial number. So we're gonna enter that serial number into our My Products section. And then down at the very bottom, there's the purchase date. So just enter the date that you purchased this and click the button that says register my product. Now you'll see that you come to the page called my products and right at the top here, it says Oxygen Pro Mini. It's gonna have your serial number and then the date you registered it. And then you've got a few options of things that you can download for this controller. Go ahead and download the preset editor for Windows or Mac, whichever you're using. And then if you haven't updated the controller to the latest firmware, go ahead and download that as well right from this section. I've got a video on how to upgrade the firmware on the controller. I'll put that in the description below or you can click here and check that out. And then scroll down in this section, and you'll see a bunch of setup instructions for the various DAWs. Again, this is important depending on the DAW you're using. If you're using Pro Tools, just keep watching this video and I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Otherwise, you can check out these instructions M-Audio has for the controller and the setup with the different DAWs. And then scroll down a little bit more and you'll see the Oxygen Pro Series Software Manager. So go ahead and download that. I'm gonna download the Windows version. Save that file to your computer. Once that's downloaded, we can go up here and we can just click on that executable file. 
and that's gonna open up and install that onto our computer. Now I mentioned the preset editor before and that's where you can build custom presets for the controls on the controller. I'll have a separate video coming out on that very soon where I go into depth and show you a couple of real world examples of how you might customize a custom preset within the controller. Once we've downloaded and installed the software manager on our computer, it's gonna open up and you can see here it's downloading the latest update of the software manager. And you can see here that it says an update for the software manager is ready to install. So we're gonna click install update. If yours is up to date, then you may not get this message. It might jump straight to the software manager. But in my case, I've had to upgrade the software manager to the latest version. Once the software manager opens, we have a few different sections here. Up at the top, we have our standalone instruments, and these are virtual instruments that you can download to your computer. And when you download these, it'll download the plugin version, but also a standalone application version. And what's cool about this is you can open these up from your start menu, just like any other piece of software, and play those instruments without ever opening your DAW. So if you wanna use this controller and you don't have a DAW picked yet, you, don't, you aren't familiar Familiar with a DAW and you want to just play the controller with some sounds, this is a great way to do that. Hybrid 3 is going to be your uh, synthesis engine. Um, the Mini Grand is your Grand and then Velvet is an electric piano engine. So you've got synthesizer type sounds, pianos, electric pianos, all of that with these standalone applications. You can see that I've already got these downloaded because I have a few different versions of the Oxygen Pro. I've already downloaded these. You're gonna see a get button and once that's downloaded, you're gonna have an install button. Go ahead and install that to your computer. If you need the activation code, click this link for the activation code and that's gonna take you to this screen here. And if you don't have an iLock account, you're gonna wanna go and create one because that's where all of the licenses are held for the different virtual instruments. That's also what Pro Tools uses for its licensing. So iLock is something you're going to see a lot. Go ahead and follow the directions there, create the iLock account, and then reactivate your products towards that account. Because I've already done that, I don't need to go through that process. Uh, down here, you'll see we've got our applications. We've got MPC Beat, we have Ableton Live Lite, and then we have Pro Tools First M Audio Edition. And with Pro Tools First M Audio Edition, you get a few instruments that you get with the full version of Pro Tools as well. One of those is Vacuum, which is a vintage synth modeler. And then we have Boom, which is a analog drum machine. We have DB33, which is your Hammond B3 plugin, and then Expand 2, which is a big variety of different sounds within a plugin where you can layer the sounds together. Uh, really powerful plugins. Those come with the Pro Tools first M Audio Edition or full version of Pro Tools if you have that. So this controller advertises coming with seven different virtual instruments. Four of those are only available with Pro Tools, so keep that in mind as you're picking your DAW. We have access to Scoove and Melodics, and then down here we've got the Oxygen Pro editors. So you'll see all of them here, and if you don't see them, go up to your little gear icon in the upper left-hand corner and click the checkbox that says Show Advanced Software, and you'll notice mine is not actually showing a checkbox here, but if I hover over it, I've got a little hand icon and it's a little bug with my computer. I'm not sure why it's always done that. Not everyone experiences that, but go ahead and look for the little hand and click that. And that's going to expose the editors here so you can download and build your own custom presets. Again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video when it comes out. Down here at the bottom, we have MPC sound packs and these are to be used with the MPC Beat software. And then at the very bottom, you have the instrument plugins only. So if you don't want the standalone application versions of Hybrid 3 Mini Grand and Velvet, go ahead and download just the plugins. You'll see mine say installed because they're installed with the actual standalone applications themselves. So that's how you get the software and the virtual instruments. Go ahead and download what you feel is right for you. I went ahead and downloaded all the instruments. 
I have Pro Tools already, so I didn't need to download any of the apps, but I do want to mess around with MPC Beats because it's the full version of MPC Beats, and I want to see if that's a good entry-level DAW for users that might just be getting this controller, just getting into computer audio. So I'll be checking that out, putting a video out fairly soon on MPC Beats and using that with the controller. But for now, we're going to switch over to Pro Tools, and we're going to take a look at getting this set up with our DAW, in my case, it's gonna be Pro Tools. So I'm gonna close the software manager. I'm gonna close my browser as well. And then I'm gonna open up Pro Tools. Now that we've got Pro Tools open, I just wanted to make note of a couple things here. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your controller's plugged in before you even open Pro Tools, because Pro Tools goes through this sequence where it checks for plugins, checks for your controller, checks for audio interfaces connected. So that's where it's gonna pick up the Oxygen Pro Mini as a MIDI controller within Pro Tools. So make sure it's plugged in and turned on, which it will be turned on if it's plugged in. Make sure it's plugged into your computer before you open Pro Tools. Now, Pro Tools is gonna require some level of an audio interface. So I'm using the Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, but if I go up to this playback engine, if I didn't have the Focusrite plugged in, I still need even a virtual audio interface in order to open Pro Tools. What you can do is you can download ASIO for All, which is a free virtual audio interface that sits on your Windows computer and actually acts as the audio interface for Pro Tools. So I'll include a link in the description below to that, but you can use that if you don't have an audio interface already set up with your computer. So back to the controller, there's a couple of ways we can use the controller with our DAW. Now, number one and the simplest level is just to use the keys to play and the pads to play, right? Not using any of the DAW functionality of the controller. And that works right out of the box. And if it doesn't for you, go up to the setup menu, go to MIDI and MIDI input devices and make sure that these MIDI 2, MIDI 3, MIDI 4, and Oxygen Pro Mini are all checked. And if they're not checked, go ahead and check them, save your session and restart Pro Tools, and it should recognize and play properly at that time. The other piece to this is the DAW controls. Now, one big thing to note here is Pro Tools first edition, the M Audio edition, or Pro Tools first that you just download for free, does not support the peripherals function of Pro Tools, and that is the DAW control. So there's a peripherals menu that I'm gonna show you here, but this is only gonna be available if you have the full version of Pro Tools. So in the peripherals menu, I'm gonna assume if you're seeing this, you've got the full version of Pro Tools. If not, and you wanna use the DAW functionality, I'd recommend maybe going with a different DAW than Pro Tools because you're not gonna get that unless you have the full version of Pro Tools. So. Over here in our peripheral screen, assuming you have the full version, go up to setup, peripherals, and then MIDI controllers tab. So this is where we set up the controller to function correctly with the DAW controls and Pro Tools. So in our first line here, I have it set up here, but you're gonna wanna set the type to HUI, the receive from, go to the predefined and MIDI in three, Oxygen Pro Mini, and then the send to, predefined MIDI out three Oxygen Pro Mini. And then your only choice on the channels is eight. Go ahead and click okay. And then when we press play on the controller, you'll see that my timeline is playing, stop, fast forward, rewind, all of those DAW controls function. And I've been using the Oxygen Pro line with Pro Tools. I think it's the perfect controller no matter what, the Mini 25, 49, 61, Hammer 88 Pro, they all work flawlessly with Pro Tools. I've had no issues. If I switch over to my screen and I add a track, go up and create a new track, my volume one slider functions on the volume slider one, and then my knob controls the pan of that track as well. One other little tip inside Pro Tools, in order to get the MIDI messages transacting with Pro Tools, let's go ahead and create a stereo instrument track. So once you've created an instrument track, you can go to this first insert here, or any of the available inserts, go to the instrument section, and let's choose Boom. So this is the drum machine that comes with Pro Tools. 
And you'll notice if I play something, nothing happens in Pro Tools. No sound, it doesn't see the MIDI messages. In order for us to see that, we have to arm the track for record. And we use this little record looking button here, the white circle. Click that and it blinks red. And now Pro Tools sees our MIDI messages and we get that drum sound coming through. Pretty cool. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of direction in setting it up with your DAW. Again, you can use just the keys pads, no DAW functionality with Pro Tools first edition. And then if you've got the full version of Pro Tools, go into the peripherals menu, set it up. And the one last thing back on the controller is make sure that your DAW is selected on the controller itself. So if you go to the DAW preset button, solid light means it's on DAW mode, not lit means it's on preset mode. Click the button so it's highlighted, so we're in DAW mode, and then hold down on that button until we get the select screen here. So we've got Ableton Live, MPC Beats, Pro Tools, Bitwig, Studio One, Cubase, Logic, Reaper, Reason, FL Studio, and then a custom preset. So to select any of these, just push down on the encoder, Make sure that's set to Pro Tools. And so make sure that you've got your DAW set correctly on the controller. And then if you're using a different DAW, go check out those instructions from M-Audio on how to set up the controller with the various DAWs. Hopefully that'll get you there. If you've got any questions about any of the things that I've talked about in this video, throw them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you get notified first the next time a new video comes out. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired and keep making that music.